Hi, my name is Tom Wentworth. I'm a volunteer here at Historic Yates Mill County Park and uh, I'm working with a couple of colleagues to put together a series of little video presentations about some of the common plants here in the park that you might be interested in knowing about and that you're likely to encounter. So today we're going to start with a, a favorite, the uh, cranefly orchid. And we're here in the middle of March, and as higher air temperatures and more intense sunlight, as we see today, signal the onset of spring at the park, we eagerly await the annual unfurling of fresh green leaves that will form the forest canopy for the next six months, really. While this spring growth flush is true of many of our deciduous um, plants, uh, certainly the woody plants, Spring marks the end of the growing season for one of our most common herbaceous species. We're referring to a common perennial terrestrial orchid, the cranefly orchid, bearing the scientific name of Tipularia discolor. This plant bucks the tide, so to speak, and displays its leaves, as you see here, throughout the winter months. Look for clusters of several dark green, slightly pleated leaves just above the leaf litter in upland forests. The leaves are egg-shaped in outline, up to four inches long, and taper to a pointed tip. Think you found one? Then turn a leaf over. And if you discover that the underside of the leaf is a shocking purple color, then there is little doubt that you have found a cranefly orchid one of the commonest orchids in all of eastern North America. Now for a small plant like this growing under the canopy of a forest, um, uh, cranefly orchids have really adopted a brilliant strategy to capture um, energy from, from sunlight. This plant, green now uh, during the uh, winter, is leafless during the summer months which seems a little odd, since the summer is when the sun is uh, brightest, most intense. But during the summer, the canopy is leafed out, and there's a little sunlight here at the forest floor to power photosynthesis. So in the late fall, as these fallen leaves from the canopy begin to cover the forest floor, Cranefly orchid unfurls fresh leaves that poke through the leaf litter. Now, with abundant sunlight, these little plants conduct photosynthesis throughout the winter and spring months, storing energy in below-ground corms, which are thickened stem bases, as seen in gladioli, for example. What's really interesting is that as summer approaches, these leaves will wither and die and really entirely disappear. But our story is still incomplete. Like most flowering plants, these little orchids must bloom and attract pollinators in order to produce their seeds. This they do in the summer by sending up foot-tall, slender, pale brown flowering stalks covered with tiny reddish-brown flowers that resemble, you guessed it, crane flies. Flying insects pollinate the flowers, and the plants produce tiny pods filled with thousands of dust-like seeds to foster the next generation. If you look at carefully at larger plants during the winter months, you may find the dried flowering stalks, like this one, and seed pods produced last summer. Sometimes there will be colonies of smaller young plants surrounding a successful, well-grown adult. So, Enjoy our beautiful cranefly orchid and our many other um, lovely native plants that we find here um, at historic Yatesville County Park. Leave them safely in their natural habitat, please, and marvel at how these small beauties thrive under challenging conditions. Thank you.